Hi, welcome to another session of Circuits and Networks. In the past class, we have dealt with series and parallel resonance. In last class, we have seen the parallel resonance, the basic phenomena, the resonant frequency, and the dynamic impedance under parallel resonance. In today's class, we will sort out some numericals based on parallel resonance in circuit. So, this particular class we are going to treat as class 2. So, let us go ahead with the numericals. The first numerical you can see an AC input voltage of 110 volts is applied across a parallel combination of impedances Z1 and Z2 as shown in the figure 1. So, these are the values which are shown. This combination is connected in series with another impedance of Z3 of 20 plus xj ohms. So, we need to find out the value of x under resonance. So, how do we do that? Clearly, by looking into the network, first write down the values of impedances. Z1 is 8 plus 4j, Z2 is 40 minus 6j and Z3 is 20 plus xj. So, this parallel combination is in series with Z3. So, the total impedance of the circuit will be Z is equal to Z1 parallel to Z2 plus Z3 whose value will be given as Z1 Z2 divided by Z1 plus Z2 plus Z3. Just substitute the values which are given in the rectangular form in your calculator as it is. In this equation, you are going to substitute the values of Z1 Z2 divided by Z1 plus Z2 plus Z3. This is how the values are substituted. Just put these values in your calculator. Arrange your cal calculator in complex mode and just substitute the values. Wherever you find J, J you can replace J with shift I. Shift I in your calculator, you can do that. So, when you are going to substitute these values in your calculator, you are going to get the value of Z, which is equal to 26.09 plus X plus 0.918 J ohms. So, this is the reactive components and this is the real value. So, what we need to remember, we need to remember that under resonance, the circuit is purely resistive and the imaginary part should be equated to zero. Then only the circuit will be completely resistive. So, the impedance of the circuit will be completely resistive when this imaginary part goes to zero. So, with that, X is equal to minus 0 0.918 ohms. So, this is how we solve a basic problem pertaining to resonance. Now, in this figure 2, we need to obtain inductor capacitor and the dynamic impedance when the bandwidth of the network is 40 kilohertz and the resonant frequency is 800 kilohertz. So, it's a typical problem. We need to obtain the values of LNC and dynamic impedance. What is dynamic impedance? That is the impedance of the circuit under parallel resonance we are going to obtain. So, this we have seen in our last class. So, for derivation, you can go through that particular class in order to understand what is the dynamic impedance. Here we will have the formula and we will substitute the values in the formula in order to obtain the dynamic impedance. So, first take the values. We have resonant frequency as 800 kilohertz, bandwidth is 40 kilohertz and resistor value is 10, 10 ohms and for the parallel circuit also we have the bandwidth is equal to R by 4 pi L. So, just substitute the value of the bandwidth that is 40 into 10 to the power of 3, R value is 10 divided by 4 pi into L. With this, I am going to get the value of L is equal to 39.7 micro henrys. Now, this is the value of L. Once we obtain the value of L, we have to calculate the value of C. For that, the resonant frequency for the parallel combination, it is derived to be 1 by 2 pi under root 1 by LC minus R square by L square. This formula we have derived in our previous class. You can go through the particular class in order to derive the formula for resonant frequency for this parallel combination. Now, just substitute the values of the L, R in this particular formula. So, we have resonant frequency as 820 power of 3, that is kilohertz value, 1 by 2 pi. This is 1 divided by the under root value of 1 divided by L. L is 39.7 micro indicates 10 to the power of minus 6 and C as it is, C is replaced as it is minus R is 10, 10 square divided by L value is 39.7 into into power of minus 6. So, this is square term. That is why this whole bracket, it is taking the square term. Now, we have to carefully solve this particular value in order to get the value of C. So, step by step you follow. See, what we have done? I have taken the squaring on both times, 
terms. So this left hand side and right hand side both are square. So this becomes 6.4 into into power of 11. And this becomes 1 by 4 pi square. And the square root term is removed with the help of squaring term. So this remains the value as it is, as well as this becomes 100 by 39.7 into 10 to the power of minus 6 whole square in the denominator. So this value again we need to carefully solve in order to obtain the value of C. So obtaining the dynamic impedance for the same problem. Now you can see I have taken the value as it is. And just I have multiplied with this 4 pi square on the left hand side, and then this value I have taken on the right side. This 100 by 39.7 into 10 to the power of minus 6 whole square value I have taken on the right hand side, and the leftover value is this 10 to the power minus 6, which is in the denominator, I have taken it to the numerator, and 39.7 C value as it is. Now this you can easily solve. So this value it will be obtained as 2.5 into 20 to the power of 30. This entire value value is this, which is equal to 20 to the power of 6 by 39.7 C. Now we need to obtain the value of C. Now C will be easy because just need to take this into the denominator, C onto the numerator on the left hand side, and just substitute the values. So we have 39.7 as it is multiplied with 2.5 33 into 20 to the power of 13. This entire value has to be divided by 10 to the power of 6. So this value is obtained as 9.96 into 10 to the power of minus 10 farads or you can write 0 0.996 into 10 to the power of minus 9 farads or 0 0.9 nano farads. So this is the value of capacitance for this particular problem. So please follow the step by step procedure in your calculator and make sure you are getting the same result. If at all you are getting any dizzy, Different result, please answer in your chat box so that I can clarify your doubt in this particular problem. And we have derived the value for dynamic impedance for this parallel combination of R in series inductor arranged parallel to capacitor as L by CR. So the L value is given as 39.7 to the power of minus 6. C value just we obtained as 0 0.9 to the power of minus 9, that is nano value, and resistance value is 10. So this value of impedance is 3985.94 ohms or you can write as 3.986 kilo ohms. So that is how we calculate the dynamic impedance for the parallel combination. I hope you understood the step by step process in order to obtain the capacitance, inductance and finally the dynamic impedance of the unknown parameters from the given parameters. Now in this figure 3, we need to calculate the resident frequency. Unlike the previous problem, just a resistor is added in series with capacitor. So we need to follow the same procedure what we have followed in the previous class. So we have Z1 is equal to R1 plus J XL ohms and Z2 is equal to R2 minus J XC ohms. So admittance value will be changed to Y1 is equal to 1 by Z1. So 1 divided by this Z1 value. Uh, so you are taking the, the reciprocals of the values and multiply and divide by R minus JXL on the numerator and denominator you are going to get R minus JXL divided by R square plus XL square. Okay, just rationalize the given value. Similarly, you can obtain the value of Y2 which is 1 by Z2 is equal to 1 by R2 minus JXC. So this will give you the rationalizing value as R plus JXC divided by R square plus XC square. Now you have Y is equal to that is admittance is equal to in admittance 1 plus admittance 2. So just we have to separate the real part and imaginary part separately. So with this I have obtained the real part and the imaginary part in this fashion. This is the conductance value. This is the susceptance value. So at residence we need to equate this susceptance value equivalent to 0. So we have the real value and the susceptance value under residence. We have to make the conductance value equivalent to the admittance value. So that is how the resonance occurs. So this imaginary part we have to equal to 0. So I am equating this imaginary part equal to 0 under resonance. So just substituting the value of XL and XC. So XL is omega naught L and XC is 1 by omega naught C. So this value, this numerator and denominator can be arranged as omega naught C divided by R2 square omega naught square C square plus 1. Now I have to cross multiply these two values. 
this on this side, this on this side. So which will give you the value to be because omega naught, omega naught on both sides goes on. Then you have L times R two square omega naught square C square plus one. This goes to the left, and this denominator goes to the right. C times of R one square plus omega naught square L square. Now just multiply L individually, C individually. So I'm going to get like this. Now I'm going to take the omega naught terms on one side. So you can see I have taken L R two square omega naught square C square minus C omega naught square L square on one side, and the other value so this C R one square minus L on the other side. Now in, from here I'm going to take out the like terms. So L C omega naught square times C R two square minus L is equal to C R one square minus L. Now just Take this value and this value into the denominator, so that I can get the value of omega naught square is equal to one by L C times of C R one square minus L divided by C R two square minus L, or I can get the value of omega naught which is equal to under root of one by L C times C R one square minus L divided by C R two square minus L. So if this is the angular resonant frequency, then the resonant frequency is obtained as one by two pi under root L C times C R one square minus L by C R two square minus L. So this is how we estimate resonant frequency for any series or parallel combination. I hope you understood how to find out the resonant frequency for series and parallel networks. You can go through my previous classes for resonance for series as well as parallel circuits and how we determine the resonant frequency for this particular different different cases. Now, as an homework, or to understand this concept in a better way, you just derive the resonant frequency for these kind of circuits. Where in Figure A, you can see R, L, C are arranged in parallel individually, and there is a mixed combination of R1, R2 with L, R2 with L and C. Now, this is another combination of parallel arrangement. Just apply the same analysis what we have done in our resonance classes. And determine the values of resonant frequency. For your clarification, the answers are obtained for this particular fourth problem are f naught is equal to one by two pi under root L C. And for this particular case, the answer is one by two pi under root one by L C minus R two square by L square. So you please cross check your result. Do by yourself and comment in the chat box if at all you are finding any difficulties solving this kind of problems. So in today's class, we have seen the resonance in parallel circuits, different numericals, and we are treating this class as class two. I hope you like my video. Please share and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon for the future notifications. Thank you.